I think that's what and I think that's why it's so difficult to conceptualize the timeline because what we view as perfection is really so low on the on the curve of perfection that we feel like oh man to get from like from here to there is super long but if you view it on a on, on like this this exponential curve we're really just at the beginning of the tail you know and and the other 99% of the curve is where the ai is going to go you know so when when does that curve hit where where is that exponential hit you know let me um give you my unendingly optimistic viewpoint that i cannot shake Okay, as somebody who's had exposure to V uh, to FSD for a better part of two years plus, starting with one of the earliest versions that was pre-released to the broad, um, cust like to the customer base. I when I was at Tesla, I had access to some of the earliest builds that 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 were out there. So this was uh, whatever whatever the I can't remember six version. I don't even know what the hell the version was. Early, early, early. If I think about the rate of progress from then to now, what they've done in the last year or so of development for full self-driving on this brand new approach with this end-to-end -end neural net stack, the amount of things that they've solved for in that amount of time is shocking to me. With the least amount of hardware, with the least amount of compute. With the caveat being that there are pieces that are incredibly safety critical that they haven't solved for yet. But we already talked about why, you know, why I, I have confidence I'll fix it at some point. But the rate of them, the, the speed of it, this is probably gonna come back to bite me in the ass by the end of the year, but I think the speed of it will surprise. It will surprise. Because if I like to use an analogy that's similar to like Go, and, and I talked about this in my in my FSD videos, and, and other people have I've talked about this endlessly. So I, I borrowed this from somebody, I can't remember who the hell said it, but this is not an original thought. You, there you go. Yeah. Oh yeah, you, that was that's right. Do you want to say it then? Do you want to you want to use a go, go analogy? Well, yeah. So, and I mean, I'm not the one who talked about this originally, but I think I'm the one that shared it with you. Yeah. Um, so when DeepMind was trying to create the best Go system in the world, the first step of that was they just had to get a system working. And so to do that, they used the data that they had available, which was all human data. So they used human games and they actually had expert Go players kind of guide it with their own policies of like, this is how I would play in this scenario. And they, they used that to build up a system. And it was this patchwork cobble system that wasn't ideal, but it still was able to just barely eke out a victory against Lee Sedol, who was the world champion at the time. But then DeepMind iterated off that. They said, okay, now that we have a system that can play Go really well, now we can just simulate Go games and we'll use the, the system that we already had made that can play as one opponent. And then we'll take and put against it a pure end-to-end -end neural network and we'll just have that network then learn how to play by playing against the original AlphaGo system. And so that's Alpha Zero. And what they found was that Alpha Zero was able to learn. And I think maybe they had the rules. I can't remember. Um, I think that Alpha Zero was provided with what are the rules of Go? And then it just played against the AlphaGo system until it got so good that eventually it was able to consistently beat the AlphaGo system. Um, and it took a lot less time to train that because it's obviously able to just sit there and simulate those games very, very quickly. Um, then they went from there to Mu Zero, which was a system that they didn't even give the rules or anything. And they, I think they just, like, obviously the game itself had rules, but I think they set up two adversarial mu zero networks that did not either one of them independently didn't know how to play and then they had those two systems play against each other and with less training time and um less resources overall they were able to train that mu zero system and it outperformed the alpha zero version as well and so they went from a system that was like at the level of the best humans on earth to better than the best humans on earth to literally like God mode, incredible performance at this game go. Um, and it was just like 
it's one of the foundational uh, demonstrations of the capability of AI that a lot of the field of AI it is using that as a guidepost for what is going to be possible and how do you build up a God mode artificial intelligence for a narrow specific application? Um, like what's the the pathway that it takes to do that? And Tesla has been following that map basically ever since they founded the uh, the autopilot team. So then, so then, then knowing having that knowledge and uh, knowing that the Tesla team is using essentially the same approach in a much more complex environment. Obviously, you're dealing with road missiles versus go right so like the analogy i would use is like the go um the go computer doing a move that loses at the game like if we're playing chess as an example if i blunder my queen that's like a crash mm -hmm. in in real life right yeah. and and for it to get to a point where it where it played where it it, it it would crash less than a human which is when it would beat a human being right that was done with an approach that was two generations from where Tesla is trying to do it right now. So it's kind of like version 11, I in my head is the is like the go player that can almost be the best players in the world, like almost, right? But then this approach is the one that will not just be the best players in the world, it will just wipe the floor with them because of it because it's taking that new approach, right? Now, the, the timeline question is a fascinating one for me, because if we think about all those systems in the past, if we think about that Go computer, if we think about uh, Deep Blue or um, the, 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 the chess computer, uh, the, the Jeopardy computer, you've got Stockfish the Stockfish. Or, Stockfish. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, Stockfish. That's right. Um, you got the, um, uh, the, the Jeopardy computer. You've got the... Uh, one that was playing, I think it was StarCraft. I, th I forget which one, which game it was. Every single that one of these. was also a deep mind thing, I think. Every single one of those, to my knowledge, use a, a very similar approach. This use some sort of neural network to to learn how to play yep. the game, right? So all of those went from, damn, it, it almost beat a human. I think in a few more years it's got it, and then within like way shorter than that, it's like God. And you're like, whoa, okay. And I think it's because. There's this like psychological thing where humans like to put a ceiling on an artificial intelligence based on what we think perfection is, right? But reality is perfection is millions of times above our ceiling, <laughs> right? Yeah. And I think I think that's what and I think that's why it's so difficult to conceptualize the timeline because what we view as perfection is really so low on the on the curve of perfection that we feel like oh man to get from like from here to there is super long but if you view it on a on, on like this this exponential curve we're really just at the beginning of the tail you know and and the other 99 percent of the curve is where the ai is going to go you know so when when does that curve hit where, where's that exponential hit you know and i think it's gonna, yeah. it's gonna i think it's gonna I hit would, a lot sooner than we think again that's that just me being an idiot i would but. agree with that <laughs> but there's one very important caveat that um can really throw a wrench in all of these monkey works from a timing perspective. And that is the fact that, you know, Mu Zero could fail a billion times in simulation and have zero real world consequences. It actually, like it was able to fail super fast and the speed at which it was allowed to fail mm. and the freedom with which it can fail in any way that it wanted to is what enabled it to learn so quickly how to find like to converge to that Great extreme point. level of perfection and that's the one luxury that fsd does not have is it has zero margin for error it cannot fail and so it really hampers the ability of the system to find that like optimal way to drive without bumping into oh i just killed a human oh i just killed a bus full of humans um because that is how the you know something like mu zero got to where it got and so that's the thing that i think the 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 thing that they are failing at in version 12 
being that safety piece is the one piece that they have to get, like that is the rate limiting step. And so until they can show me that they can improve safe, like I need to have some form of data points where I can infer some sort of rate of change of safety improvements in on the version 12 stack specifically. And until we can see, you know, are they able, what's that rate of change? How fast can they make improvements? And then what's the shape of that rate of change? Is it linear rate of change? Is it an exponential rate of change? Um, Cause even, even if it's a linear rate of change that means it's an exponential progress. Uh, Cause we're talking about second order derivatives there. Yeah. And <clears throat> um, yeah, that's, that's the part that I just, we don't have enough data to make a confident prediction about what the timelines, like I, I have a relatively high confidence level in its ability to get there and in Tesla's incredible team, like in their ability to find innovative ways to get around this problem. Like that's, it, it's been really cool to see how Tesla has innovated all around the way that they build the software in order to make rapid progress, even though they don't have any margin for error. Um, yeah. And so, yeah, that that's where I'm just like trying to reset. Okay. How, like how fast should I expect or, and, and really, I th honestly, I think the, how fast I should expect it question is not one that I should even be asking. What I really need to be asking is what are the milestones that I need to see in order to unlock like there's a series of steps and there's sequential milestones that have to be reached and you can't skip one you have to you know hit each one before you can move on to the next one and so i think it's about defining for myself what the milestones that i need to see are and then just monitoring closely are we making progress towards those milestones